All right. Case three. We dealt with case one and two. Case three is now it is proper fraction. No, proper rational function. Proper. Proper just means this. Now. Okay, let, maybe let's focus our attention on an example here. Proper just means this. Is it obvious to all of us that if it is a proper rational function, then y equals to 0 is a horizontal asymptote? Is it obvious to all of us? Yes or no? If not, I can explain. No problem. Explain. Okay, fine. What do we do? Okay, let's use this example. Uh, let's use... Let's use a very simple example. y equals to x plus 1 over x squared plus 2. Okay, this is proper. Because numerator is linear, denominator is quadratic. Now, you actually want to find out as x tends to infinity what happens, right? What happens to, to y? Now, let's remember this technique we learned earlier in the chapter. We, I divide numerator and denominator by something. In this case, I just divide by x. I will get 1 plus 1 over x over x plus 2 over x. Now it becomes obvious. Why? Because as x tends to infinity, this one tends to 0. This one tends to 0. So therefore, the whole fraction is, tends to 1 over x. And as x tends to infinity, y tends to Zero. So no matter what is the rest, no matter what is the proper fraction, you realize that you will always get this kind of form. You will always tend to zero. So y goes zero is always a horizontal symbol. So don't just accept the result, but it all makes sense. It should make sense. Math is the most logical subject you can ever find. <laughs> right now, seriously. Okay. Now, similarly, now. Let's take a look. Solving gx equals to 0, that means the denominator equals to 0, gives the vertical asymptotes. Of course. Because you look here, x equals to negative 1 and x equals to 3 must give you the vertical asymptote. Quite obvious. Cannot take on negative 1, cannot take on negative 3. Done. So, okay, so let's do example 13. Of course, y equals to 0. Um, look. I use the example of divide both top and bottom by x. You can also divide top and bottom by x squared, you will still get the same result. Just doesn't really matter. Okay, this school is just a different approach. Doesn't matter. Okay. So you get the vertical asymptotes. All okay? Can? Can right? Okay, I always like to sketch the graph to complete the picture. Uh. Alright? so that we all know how it really looks like. So let's try. We get this. Some of us can, can, can uh, do it on your own as well. We get uh, x minus 1, and then uh, x plus 1, x minus 3. How does it look like on the GC itself? Wow, so complicated. Again, learning points. From your analysis, you know you have two vertical asymptotes. Look here, these two are your vertical asymptotes. Dotted lines on your sketch. Okay, not given in GCU. Again. Second thing, you look here. It looks like the graph coincides with the x-axis. But actually, it doesn't. It is just an asymptote. It tends closer and closer and closer to the x-axis, but it, it will never touch it. So this, don't trust GC. Follow? Can? Okay, so you got these two, and you've got this one. Can? Okay? So I'm not going to do the sketch. You don't have to copy, but just to help us complete that picture. 